Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And we're going to start what I'm going to call Chapter 5 part of this playlist, which is comparing population mean vectors. And first we'll look at tests for one population mean vector, and we'll also assume that the covariance matrix is known. Now, a quick review of the univariate one sample Z test is this. So we're given a random sample of size n, and we want to test whether mu is equal to some value, that's the null hypothesis, and the alternative is that it's not equal to that value. We assume that the data are IID, normal random variables, mean, mu, and variance sigma squared. IID stands for independent, identically distributed, you know, normal random variables, and we know sigma squared. Now, the sampling distribution of the mean, remember this is in the univariate setting, so it's the sum of the yi divided by n, is normal. So with mean mu and variance sigma squared over n. So then we can show that this uh, standardized variable, y bar minus mu divided by the standard deviation sigma over the square root of n, is, is a standard normal. So we create a test statistic, and we call it Z, and it's a standard normal random variable. And if the value is too big or too small, meaning the sample mean is very far from the hypothesized mean, then we reject. And so at the, if we let alpha be 0.05, we reject if Z is less than or equal to 1.96 or greater than 1.96. And that's the test. And the nice thing about this test, even if we're not from a normal distribution, Z is still approximately normally, or a, approximately standard normal. And this is for large N. That's by the central limit theorem. Now let's move into the multivariate setting. And it's, and it's very similar. The null hypothesis is that mu is some value. Remember, those are vectors. It's a P by 1 vector. So we, we take observations, y1, y2, to yn, and we want to test the null hypothesis that the uh, population mean is some value versus it's not some value. And so remember, these observations are vectors. We're collecting p different variables on each subject or unit. And the interesting thing about this hypothesis, it's pretty obvious what equal to means. It, when two vectors are equal, it means a, each component is the same. Now, when it's not equal to zero, it just said it just means that one of those components is not equal. You know, so they could all be equal, but one component. So you know, the, say the first component is not equal to that hypothesized value. Then those mean vectors are different. So that's one of the downsides of this test, if we reject, we just know w somewhere there's a difference. We don't necessarily know which one. And we'll, of course, dabble with that in later videos. So more explicitly, the null hypothesis is that the mean vector is some value, some, you know, it's a constant vector, or it's not. Now let's assume that our vectors, our IID, multivariate normal, mean vector mu, covariance matrix sigma, they're IID, so independent, identically distributed, and we know the covariance matrix. So the sampling distribution of the sample mean vector is multivariate normal with mean vector mu and variance covariance matrix sigma divided by n, or 1 over n times sigma. Now, if H0 is true, meaning our mean vector is equal to this hypothesized value, then Z squared is this value, and it follows a chi-squared distribution. And we reject H0 if Z squared is bigger than some cutoff value, chi-squared uh, with alpha, you know, the and the uh, degrees of freedom p alpha corresponds to the area in the tail of the right in the right tail of a chi squared distribution p is the degrees of freedom now z squared is 
that's the analogous of the univariate variable. And I'm going to scroll back here a second. So in the univariate setting, we let z equal this value, and it's a standard normal. And note if we were to square z, so we square a standard normal distribution, then we get a, a chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom. And so that's actually why we call this test statistic z squared, because it's a chi-square random variable. And so it's sort of analogous to what we did in the univariate setting. So here's an example. So let's say we collect the height and weight of 20 college age males. So that means n equals 20 and p is 2. So each subject, we have two variables, two pieces of information. And I'm, and I'm going to say, see the data in the illust uh, our illustrations below. So we'll, we'll, we'll create a plot and I'll show you the values. So assume we know them <laughs> for this. And, and the null hypothesis is that the mean vector is 70 and 170 versus the alternative that it's not 70 and 170. And we're going to assume that the sample originated from a multivariate normal distribution with a known covariance matrix of this, you know, 20, 100, 100, and 1,000. So the variances are down the diagonal. So the test statistic is this. <clears throat> z squared and we're going to we're going to fill in the values for this formula okay. so 20 and this is the, the sample mean vector is 71.45 and 164.7 70 and 170 is a hypothesized value this is the covariance matrix and then this vector is the same. When you do that matrix multiplication, you get 8.4026. Well, the critical value, chi sub 0.05 with two degrees of freedom is 5.99. So our test statistic is bigger than this critical value. And so we reject. So there is evidence to say that the mean that our data follow some normal distribution with mean vector not equal to 70 and 170. Now here's a, here's an R illustration of the calculations. And then as you can see, we'll do a graphical illustration of what's, what's going on to get a little deeper understanding. So the X's or the uh, heights is X and Y is the weight of these uh, college students, male college students. Mu is the hypothesized mean value, 70 and 170. Sig is the, the covariance matrix that we're assuming to be normal. So this value, the test statistic, is really a Mahalanobis distance. And so we the vector is the sample mean vector. So it's, remember, we. I have to use a C, which says this is create a vector, and I want the first component to be the mean of the x's, second component, component the mean of the y's. Mu is our um, hypothesized value. Sig, now the covariance matrix, remember it's sigma divided by n, and so the length of x tells us you know, how many observations, so it's 20. And look at what, we get 8.4026, which is exactly the value we got when we calculated it by hand. And the cutoff value is 5.99146, so it's the same. Now, the interesting thing about chi's, the function in, in R, Q means quantile. So we, if the, and it's a cumulative. So if we want a 0.05 area in the right tail, that means left, we have 95%. And so that's what the 95% is. There is an option to say, you know, left tail false, which means calculate the right tail, and then we would point, put, we'd put 0.05, but it's just easier to do this. So this is how you'd calculate this Z test statistic in R. Now for a graphical illustration, and perhaps I should have done this, to make it bigger. So we use Mahalanobis distance function to calculate it. Now for a graphical illustration, um, we're not really going to go over the uh, R code, but 
I wrote a function which I call draw ellipse, which I, I actually think is pretty creative, pretty good. <laughs> um, so we're going to make use of that function. So again, we're, we have the x values, the y values, the mean, sigma. I went ahead and divided by the uh, n, so that's our sigma. And then I created... Uh, Yeah, so we have eigenvectors, eigenvalues, and actually that's why we're not really going to review the code because we'll touch upon what I did in a later video. In the So we plot them and we create the ellipse. Okay, so this is the plot. So the black circles are the actual values. The red ellipse is the 95% confidence ellipse. So this is a constant distance of that chi-square value. So this is the critical region. Now, if, if our sample mean vector is in this region, we do not reject the null hypothesis. If it's out of the region, we reject the null hypothesis. So since our sample mean vector is outside this ellipse, we reject. And if we, well, actually, let me, the next plot, we I kind of blow up this region again to make it a little easier to see. So here it is. So this is the 95% confidence ellipse. Our sample mean vectors outside of it, we reject. Now this, the black box is, if we were to do univariate tests, so if we did, if we conduct a univariate Z test that said, is the mean of the height 70 or not? Well, the, these vertical lines is the critical region for those values. And notice the mean is between them, so we would not reject the null hypothesis. And if we were to do a, a univariate test for weight, so is the mean 170 or not, these horizontal lines would be the critical regions for that test. And our mean is between them, so we would not reject no hypothesis. So there's not, an, if we do two univariate tests, there's not enough evidence to say that the mean is not 70 in height and not 170 in weight. But when we do the, the multivariate test, we reject, right? And the big reason is the univariate tests ignore the correlations between the variables, right? So this, when if we do two univariate tests, we're not using all the information available, right? We don't know the correlation between the two values, so um, it's not as powerful. So the multivariate test is often more powerful than the univariate test. And a big, 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 big note is that when you're conducting lots of univariate tests, it inflates the type 1 error. Now, the type 1 error is you reject the null hypothesis when you shouldn't. Okay, well, we're, uh, we're at 13 minutes, so I better uh, cut this video off. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.